Hey, what's up? This is Monty from Escape the Fate. Our new album comes out November 2nd, self-titled, Escape the Fate. Pick it up soon. I first started playing guitar like about middle school, like eighth grade. I actually moved school, so I lost a lot of my friends. And I, I don't know, I just picked up the guitar because that was a fun thing to do for me. And I also, you know, wanted to learn, so I went to the shop and picked up a guitar magazine, which was Guitar World. Thank you. And basically just started playing from there and got my first guitar from my grandpa. It was a Seven String Jackson because at the time I was fans of uh, new metal bands like Korn, Orgy, all that. It was big and very popular at the time. And still are. But I started playing, picking up, and went from there. Got into more classical style music, more um, 80s rock, 70s. Just kept diving into all the years and decades of music. It was awesome. I started really developing my playing and soloing with um, Van Halen because he would always, the way he would always use a pick, like he would scream when he would bend his solos. And that was a big, that was like, a, that would get my attention a lot. And Zach Wilde. Zach Wilde was a big favorite of mine. And um, yeah, some of the techniques also I was learning was sweep techniques. And at the time, that was. A, that was a really cool new thing I learned then. Issues came together when um, yeah, I was sitting at home jamming on a couple of riffs and some tight rhythms and I wrote Issues in about like two hours, real quick song and like I don't know, everything just locked up for that song. This guitar like basically sang to me, I guess, on that song. So it was actually really, really cool. Uh, when I play this riff, I do it all downstroke and I try to get that nice pinchy squeal in it. And you hear it with this. And then in the verses, I start palming, but I do all downstrokes to give it a nice tight heaviness, which is like this. Fast, that sounds all tight like this. And when it gets uh, closer to the chorus, we go into the pre-chorus, which is basically the same riff, but it does it something like this. And I leave off on that harmonic right there at the fifth fret harmonic. Um, I play a six string down a whole step to drop C, and I do basically the root notes are still like I do octaves of the riff. <laughs> And then on the descending part of that, I um, start playing the octaves of the fret, like this. Here's a little bit slower. So the root note climbs with the high ri octave riff. Here's a chorus of rhythm. And 
during the middle part of the chorus, when I hit the eighth fret, I do um, a full on chord to brighten it up, brighten up the sound like this. And here's the lead to the chorus. And it has a chorus pedal on it. it. has a boss chorus with the depth turned all the way up. Here's the guitar solo from Issues. <laughs> On the issue solo, I use a wall pedal and I use the, also the whammy bar at the same time and I pick up the note. Kind of like this. The second time I use a, a harm natural harmonic on the ninth fret. Try to get the nice good scream out of that one. And this is it combined. Then I go into a bendy lead without the ball. And then hammer-ons on the 15 to 12. And a little climb up, hammer-on to end the solo. Begin. Here's some of the sweeps I would practice just to get my fingers going. Here's it really slow. In the song situations, at the end of the song, Climax song, I just thought it'd be cool because I just learned sweet picking at the time in the studio from um, Guitar World, and it was actually really rad. Um, so I wanted to incorporate that in our song, and that was in situations, and it goes like this. <laughs> slower me and my brother we would um get like the G3 tour, Steve I DVDs, Yngwie DVDs. We'd like to watch them and see them. And um, yeah, watching their technique and their playing, you know, and helped, it, helped me out a lot with that. <laughs> Ten Miles Wide started. Um, we wanted a badass rock song, so and at the time, our manager Joey was friends with Josh Todd from Buck Cherry. Called him up, and he came over, and we were playing him some riffs, and that riff stood out to him. And we went downstairs, jammed it, screamed it in the mic while I was playing the riff, and had and that's how Ten Miles Wide was made. And the video was really fun. Obviously, go check it out. Ten Miles Wide. Type it in wherever. And here's how the riff goes. With a triplet in it, mixed in, palm me to triplet. Here's a slower. I like to get the squeals, but at the same time, the chugs from the triplets. And so, there's. Grab the pick at a certain angle, you'll find it, and 
This is how it goes slow. So at the same time, you're getting a nice good chug and a good squeal. But not too much of a squeal because you want to still hear the riff. And one of my favorite riffs right now, I just recently made up for the new album. Um, goes a little bit like this, another like squeal technique. Here it goes. And on that song, I um, I do a bit of single string notes plus um, more string, like corded, like like this. I'll play it slow. And that's basically that slow. A little bit of a chord action, single notes, squeals. Came out one of my favorites, personally. I use the Dunlop Sharp 0.73 millimeters because they're very pointy and sharp. So I could do the chugs, the little sharp point, and the squeals on the side at the same time. So, And that helps me with speed picking, squeals chugs, everything. Dig right in there and get fast. I use Slinky Top Heavy Bottom Ernie Balls. Um, I think it's 52 to 9. So, around there. It's a little bit custom, but it's basically Slinky Top Heavy Bottoms. So you can still get good bends. I use orange. Um, orange cabs, orange heads. I, I go through two amps at one time. I plug them up. <laughs> Evan does it. So. Yeah, I use orange amps. Use orange amps. Are they hundred? Yeah, hundred watt. Yeah, they're. Um, I think they're actually thirty watt. They're like not. Oh, they're thirty watt. Wait, watt. one's like. One's really low. I know it was just any the blast. It maybe not thirty. It was like rock verb thirty or thirty or rock verb like fifty or something like that. Maybe the wattage is on there, but. I remember it being called Rock Group 30 because we'd have to turn it all the way up and blast it. Because oranges sound you know, great when they're blasting. Yeah. That helps me also when I'm playing like rock or metal, whatever, and I still do the chords in there like randomly. Like through an orange, it kind of goes, you know, it busts out the all the chords you could hear them break. Very clean, oh, but yeah, still should... heavy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I used so many pedals that I used a hog. I used a bass synthesizer. Um, what is it called? The Electro Harmonix, Harmonix bass synthesizer. And a blues driver, boss blues driver for solos and leads. And, you know, boss chorus pedal. I use so much stuff on the album to get a nice, good, heavy tone and fatten it up with those pedals. And I just had fun, basically, experimented. I used um, my Ibanez 7 string. It's actually what most of the songs are on. Is a Ibanez just like this, but 7 strings. Everything is just exploding from here on. Um, you know, touring, nonstop, recording, having fun. Ever since this, you know, this new album's coming out, like the radio plays everywhere. I'm here at Guitar World now. Uh, always wanted to be here. Thank you for having me. And yeah, dreams are coming true. Dreams can come true for you. Just keep doing what you love doing and don't stop. <laughs>